Hi guys, I'm Rick Crawley with Achilles Heel Tactical. Welcome back to this UF Pro Series of Carbine Fundamentals. In this episode, we're gonna be establishing carbine fundamentals from the ground up, starting with stance and grip. All right, so for stance, for our stance, we wanna focus on two things. We want to be able to mitigate and absorb force. Not just force from the recoil that is going to be felt from this weapon system, but also environmental force. So absorb and mitigate forces. Those are two principles that I truly believe in, in building a proper stance. Other factors that we need to consider are building a sustainable, moldable, and adaptable platform. So not standing toe to toe, something that's a little bit more athletic. So when building an athletic stance, I want to make sure my feet are offset about shoulder width apart. I wanna make sure that my shoulders and my hips are square to my objective area that I intend to engage. From there, I want to make sure that I have loaded posture from my lower extremity. And then as it enters the upper extremity, I wanna make sure that I have good posture from the hips up. So as I present my rifle straight up to my eye, notice how my posture does not go past my heel. I don't stand tall and neutral. What I'm doing is engaging from the hips forward, bringing my chest up over my belt line and driving my gun straight out. All right, moving on to grip. We first want to establish how many points of contact we have on the weapon system. With our dominant side grip and our non-dominant side grip, we also have our stock weld and our cheek weld. So that's four points of contact. Now, a lot of the questions I get with the stock weld is where do I place this stock in my shoulder in order to drive in the most efficient manner straight up to the eye? Well, the question just answered itself. In order to find the correct placement of this stock, I want to put the eye box of my optic directly in front of my eye. As I drive straight up with my non-dominant and dominant side grips, I want to make sure that my head movement does not go right or I have to cant the rifle to find the eye. Not fighting a natural human response of having to go look for the optic, but driving the optic straight up to the eye where I stand tall. That's gonna be the goal for your stock placement. Your cheek weld, as far as your cheek weld, that's going to be completely dictated by the height of your optic. As we rise this weapon system up, that we do have a solid, consistent cheek weld. All right, moving on to dominant side grip. This is your fire control hand. I want to be able to make sure that I can manipulate safety selector switches with this hand and make sure that I can isolate from a single joint within my trigger control. For me, that's all my dominant side grip is here to do. It's not here to drive pressure back into my center line. It's simply establishing a high firm purchase and giving me the ability to manipulate safety selector switches and manipulate disciplined trigger control. All right, for me with grip, I wanna put the most emphasis on my non-dominant side grip. And I'll demonstrate this for you here in a minute. But as I reach out for my non-dominant side grip, when the gun recoils due to the buffering system that exists in this AR-15 platform, I want to control the front end of the gun because if the nose of the gun rises, the optic will then follow. What I wanna do is not cradle the gun. I don't want to fix on a vertical fixture off the gun. I want to come over, thumb over bore, and control the entirety of the upward movement of this rail. Now, something I like to do within my presentation is make sure that as I present this rifle, I drive my elbows in line with the rifle instead of offline. So that was your non-dominant side demonstration. This is your dominant side. As I present this rifle, I wanna make sure my elbows are in line with the gun instead of offline. So moving back to our non-dominant side presentation, so notice as I bring my non-dominant side grip up, throwing my thumb over bore and running my sling from the forward attachment over my radius bone. As I bring my elbow down, it tenses up the sling, giving me more stability. What this is going to do for me is allow me to create a baseline of stability where the disruption is going to be seen from the nose of the gun as it wants to rise. Notice with proper sling tension, the nose is no longer able to. By producing this leverage at the nose of the gun, it establishes a baseline of stability, assisting in the mitigation of recoil and keeping your sights down on target. What I like to do is I will first adjust my sling, build a proper platform within my stance and posture, 
Then bringing my elbows in line as I present the rifle straight to my eye, I will put the weapon on fire, making sure that I'm not driving the weapon system back into me. I want to control the weapon at the nose of the gun, utilizing proper sling tension, and I want to fire three rounds while staring straight down. I'm testing my posture and stance per the recoil impulse. So as I bring my eyes down, I fire three rounds, and I actually am able to now feel the recoil impulse rather than focusing on returning the sights back down on target. Once I have felt the recoil impulse with three rounds, I'm then going to move to five. Same thing, eyes down. So what you'll be able to tell with these isolation drills is where your posture or your stance is falling short. If you do not have a loaded lower extremity, your toes will lift off the ground. As I load the balls of my feet and load my posture, I look straight down, fire those five rounds. A shift in the baseline with bad posture would look like this. As I look straight down, fire my first three. Notice my toes lift off the ground. Once I adjust, get a good, more aggressive stance, bring those elbows in line and fire five rounds. Now, notice nothing's changed about the baseline of my stance, posture, nor my grip. All right, so next time you're at the range and you're having trouble finding stability within your stance, try these isolation drills. Again, take the focus off your sights and put it on what you're isolating. All right, guys, this concludes this episode. Again, this should not be considered an all-inclusive summary of my curriculum. 